Hello everyone, this is Roxas on the 59 welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy. Last time, we finished up Ghostly Galaxy as well as Buoy Base Galaxy, getting ourselves quite a number of stars, including the coveted green star. In this episode, we're going to be tackling the boss of the dome in... Bowser Jr.'s Airship Armada. So... Here's one in the side of your eye. And sinking the airships. Let's do this. Oh, look, a Mandy bug. Oh, more of that Mario 3 nostalgia. Oh, look at all the Octumbas. So many Octumbas. Octumba. Bop. Toomba. And now to launch ourselves out of cannons. Cannons are based on the motion control, so keep that in mind. And I think right there. Ah, Magic Koopas. Nope, let it go, Mario. Mario? Let it go. Well, that made that look pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna wait for the bullet bills to explode. And we're gonna go off. Uh oh, I think I missed it. We're gonna just grab that just in case. Coming stump. Homing stump. It was kind of a dinky homing stump, I will admit. All right. Let us get more star bits. I am one short from buying something from the Moogle shop. Maybe if I do this, I will get more star bits. All right, time for a little luma li luma lap. Welcome to the luma shop. So, bye bye bye. We will buy the extender shroom, which I don't know why I'm calling it the extender shroom now. And there we go. What do you have to say, Captain Toad? Okay, so what were you doing here, Mandibug? I could have just killed the Mandibug. But let's head off to the airship. Out of my way. Oh, we got three spiders. We got magic Koopas. The evil Koopa wizards. Wiesenheimer! <laughs> Alright! So how do I take it, right? Like this! Boop! Boop! Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Whoop! Uh-oh. No, 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 no! Ha-ha! Kinda wanted that to happen. Alright. And three hits. And Bowser Jr. gets more angry. I threw it at the Koopa. Ha 
bop. Now comes the fun part. And there we go. Only five hits. I'm surprised it didn't take six. But this makes another grand star. Ours. So. Guran Star! Now let's get rid of that green star beacon, which I'm pretty sure doesn't exist, and get a um, lightish blue. That does exist. And as a result, a new dome is unlocked. The bedroom. So, galaxy complete. And we've discovered five new galaxies. If I wasn't going for 100%, those would be the last five galaxies of the game. Sweet! <laughs> Alright! So, save the game? Nope. But, now that we have that new dome unlocked, there are a few things I need to explain. Off screen, when I booted up the game, I went to talk to Mail Toad, like I always do to get my letter from Princess Peach. Well, it turns out there was a letter from Luigi! Bro, I got a starter, but now I can't get back. This picture shows where I am. Help me! Well, I happen to know where that is located. That is located over inside of Battle Rock Galaxy. So we're going to need to head back to Battle Rock Galaxy to save Luigi. So I'm going to cut to the end of Battle Rock. It's the first mission of Battle Rock Galaxy that we have to do. The one where we had to lure the bullet... Bill to blow up the cage containing the star. Well, we have to do that again, but this time we need to do it to free Luigi. So, we're gonna go to Battle Rock, and as you can see by that green question mark, we're getting another green star. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back at the end of the first mission of Battle Rock Galaxy. So, what we need are some bullet bills. Blow that up so I can get that out of the way. All right. More bullet bills, please. Follow me, Bill. I need you. There you go, Luigi. So. Sorry, I sort of had to deal with Bowser Jr. and his airship armada. See? It's green, like Luigi. It's green like Luigi. So, his power start is mine. Well, too bad, Luigi. I'm the one that gets the victory screen. Stop. All right, so with that, Battle Rock Galaxy is nearly complete. Yes, we still have one more star in that place, believe it or not. So, do I want to save? Nope. But, now we need to go and do one more mission, and then we're going to go and read Rosalina's storybook, in which we have quite a few chapters to read. And if we're not careful, I might end up having to make an entire part dedicated to just the storybook which I don't want to do I I want to keep action going All right but our last star we're going to do for this episode is the hungry Luma of the kitchen bursting with snacky happiness since 2008 
No, wait, no, 2007. So, 600 star bits to go. And what does this one turn into? Why, it turns into... Drip Drop Galaxy. So, let's go. Welcome to Drip Drop Galaxy with a giant eel outbreak. Oh no, not eels. Oh, they look so derpy. But those penguins seem concerned. It's an entire planetoid of nothing but water. Yes. What do you have to say, old man penguin? Are there fish on this planet? Get rid of those big eels. Okie dokie. How do we get rid of them? Well, you can run a torpedo Ted into them, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and throw a shell at them. Throwing a shell at them is faster than you doing a torpedo Ted. Uh, fun fact, this actually glitched out on me inside of the practice file I did, and where no torpedo Ted's launched, I'm going to die. There we go. I think I need to get more shells, so... Grab this shell. Go underwater. Eel. All right, let's aim true. Oh God, the star shroom crashed again. Oh, there are. Leave me alone, torpedo Ted's. Where's the eels? Mr. Eel, come out and play. There's one, I think. There's two. Oh, I missed. Let's try the red shell. I believe the red shell homes in. First things first, we need to get some air. Turn around, Mario. Yep, red shells do indeed home in. So we're gonna get the red shell. Go after this eel. This should be the last eel. And goodbye. And a star appears on the sunken ship. How appropriate. All right. Now we have saved this entire planet's line of penguin residents. They may fish in peace. I wonder where the eels came from. They had to have been space eels. Those are always the worst kind of eels, or space eels. But, there we go. Another galaxy complete. So, before we end off the episode, Let's go and read some more of that storybook, shall we? So, in we go. Ooh. Let us begin. Chapter three, The Comet. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get that comet! The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop 
utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where the Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4 The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? she asked, her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun and the, or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama? Oh, Mama. Mwah. The pair traveled through the starry skies, and through they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With those words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there, the girl said busily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike any they had ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With the library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate. It was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was rather was too large for the two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. No, I need more! <laughs> no, no, Rosalina. Give me more storybook. This story's so good. But, there we go. Seems we've seen the beginnings of the Comet Observatory, so to speak. But, anyway guys, I'm going to end it off right here. This has been Roxas1359. Next time, we're going to be heading off to our newest dome... The bedroom. So, see you all next time.